Hello folks, this is Joe from MyGeekScene.com. I am standing here at Blackrock Medieval Fest. I'm standing here with two members of Swords of Valor from Kalamazoo, Haven and Maggie. How are you two doing today? Doing very well. Yeah. Well, she like, doesn't talk much. Oh, well, she will be talking for this interview. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, I don't care if your bow staff is gold-plated. <laughs> no, it's just awkward. No, in all honesty, I found out about your group uh, through Cedar Springs Ren Fair when I first attended that a few, about a month ago or so. Well, now close to, not necessarily two months, but it was in June. Right. So how long has Swords of Valor been out? Swords of Valor's been around for about 21 years. Um, we've been sword fighting and performing at various Renaissance fairs, pirate festivals, fantasy festivals. We've even done a fairy fest that was tons of fairies. Um, we've even done company picnics, weddings, various other things all over the Great Lakes region. Um, we started off as, a, let's see if I remember my history correctly, we started off actually with my predecessor, which would have been my father-in-law. And he started off when he came from another group uh, that was called Circle of Swords way back, and this is 21 years ago. Uh, with their blessing, they were out of uh, Indiana, He wanted, to, and my father-in-law wanted to start something up here in Michigan. So he learned from them, brought their training up here to Michigan, started recruiting some of his local friends. We, uh, next thing you know, it went from five people to seven to ten. And we've usually kept about 15 members all the way through um, until recently. Uh, this is, uh, but again, we've been doing this for 21 years and the, the, the groups changed. New people come in, people leave. Um, but uh, myself, I've been with the group for 13 years and uh, Maggie here actually just started off with us this past season. Uh, you're, this is actually a year you've been with us, right? Yep. Again, one one it one one word one, one word one word. Uh, so she's been with us for only a year, but uh, she's learning a lot. She right now fights just with the the bow staff, but she's been uh, learning sword as well. Um, and hopefully by next season, we're gonna have her fighting with swords too. So basically, your group does battle with various weapons. That's probably what I should have said in the beginning of this. Yes, nah! we do. Stage. No. <laughs> right, what we do is we do. Uh, I like to describe ourselves as unchoreographed comedy sword fighting troop with a dash of history. Um, we try and give at least a little bit of information when we're fighting, um, but we also fight with just about anything. In, uh, in our most recent shows we've been doing here at Blackrock, we've fought with two-handed swords, great swords, single-handed swords, sabers, shields, axes, hammers, and even occasionally actually bat lifts. Yes, for those who aren't familiar with the bat lift, that is the Klingon weapon of choice. So, like, if you've dishonored somebody, <laughs> you're going to have to fight, and someone's going to die. A big, huge, spiky thing. She loves them. Now, do you want to learn the bat lift? Are you going to talk? Yes. Okay. Still still, still, still no one word. word. One word. Yeah. Um, yeah. But nonetheless, how did you get involved in this group? Um, I got involved with this group, actually, as, as funny as this sounds, I, I started coming into the group um, before I actually joined. I started off doing renaissance fairs with my uh, mother-in-law many years ago when I was 10 at the other side of the state at the big renaissance fair in Holly. Uh, over the years I would travel to some of the other fairs. I ended up coming to Silverleaf Fair on this side of the state where I actually met uh, my father-in-law now before he was my father-in-law and he invited me out to, to come out and check out his troop. I came out to one or two practices. Unfortunately, my time in life wasn't the right timing for doing this kind of thing. Um, fast forward about a year or two later. A friend of a friend, I'm fixing a car, I meet a girl, she takes me over to her house, and that's when I meet my father-in-law who runs a sword fighting troop. And, you know, it's really good when the girl you're actually interested in, you already know her father. It, it really cuts down on the animosity <laughs> um, when we went back to being, like, almost old buddies. So, uh, yeah, but, but he could have He still could have. Oh, he has, actually, many times. Um but he, uh, but I, I got back into it at that point. I was the right timing. Um, so I'll admit it. I got into this because of a girl. Um, and you're laughing at me. Uh, then my father-in-law really helped me train. I did start fighting before this group. I used to fight with the Society for Creative Anachronism. Okay. Um, which uh, they do full armored contact, but they use rattan. So bamboo sticks and beat each other up. Oh, I'm familiar with that with a okay. uh, martial arts background myself. There you go. Yeah. So I started there, but it really... The armor was just way too much for me. I'm a, I'm a relatively small guy, 150 pounds of armor. I didn't move too well. I like being able to move, um, just like Maggie likes to move. Yep. 
Well, Maggie, I have well, still one word. Yeah. Well, ask her how she. Yeah. Yeah, Maggie, I was about to ask you, so that would require more than one word. How did you get involved with this? Um. That's it. End of yeah, end of response. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, I've gone to a couple of Ren fairs. I really enjoyed uh, attending them, and um. I mean, I like the costuming and the garb and the atmosphere and people having a lot of fun and the whole uh, fantasy element that's involved in some of the educational stuff. Um, but what was really interesting to me was that people were fighting each other with weapons uh, in various ways. Armor on horses, long sticks, big sticks, short sticks, things with sharp edges, whatever, etc. Um, I'd always been interested in fighting and fighting people and fighting people with weapons. So um, when Got I met, all bases covered. Yeah, yeah, when I met someone who um, was uh, attending Swords of Valor meetings, I came with him, and um, I just kind of jumped in. So I showed up because of a woman, and you showed up because of a guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Swords of Valor bringing people together, folks. Yes. Yeah. Relations. Weapons, blades, Weapons. love. Well, every time I've seen you, you've always had the staff with you. The now, I guess, third time I've seen you. Is that your weapon of choice? It is right now. Um, it's my weapon of choice right now because it's the one that I'm most familiar with. So I have a larger percentage of being sure to hurt someone with it. So um, when I move on and train with other things, then whatever I end up being the most proficient at hurting other people with will probably be my weapon of choice. Fair enough. Haven, what's your weapon of choice then? Thank you, Maggie. I would actually say my favorite weapon of choice is actually a combination. Um, my personal favorite is actually sword and shield. Um, I've always found that the the hmm, I'm trying to think having a defensive measure, having the shield, it gives me a little bit of security, and it was one of the first things I ever learned to fight with. So a single-handed sword and a shield is my go-to. If I'm unsec if I'm unfamiliar with somebody, I will go to that as my my go-to weapon. It's the most one I'm most familiar with. But being the the fact that I'm the trainer now of the Swords of Valor, I have to be proficient in almost every style of weapon. And uh, if I don't, then we find somebody who is, bring them into the troop, uh, even if it's just uh, for you know, a day or two to, to learn that weapon. Um, I, and we encourage actually our members to go and train from with other people. Uh, Maggie actually just today was over with the Vikings learning some sword, some uh, shield and axe work. Uh, because obviously most she's, excellent, Miss. Most excellent. Yeah, so she's. So we encourage that kind of. You know, I just don't want you to leave. I still want you to stay with us. We're a good group, but I, I, I do recommend and, and, and encourage cross training and learning from other people, so you can bring that knowledge back to us and just make the group as a whole better. The better everybody is, the better off we are as a whole. Character-wise, you strike me as a dagger type of person. I have fought with dagger many a time. Just sneaky, uh, like that. Nah. There you go. I'm not that uh, sneaky. <laughs> uh, I will admit, I do like daggers. I like fighting small and in close, but uh, we also try and put on a show. And as funny as that sounds, daggers don't put on a good show. They're not flashy. They're not big. They're not supposed to be. They're supposed to just yeah, yeah. kill them. Dude, what's it, it, I'll let you in on a little secret, by the way. <gasps> oh, a secret? No. We've been doing, I've been doing this long enough, and my, even my predecessor, my father-in-law, McGowan, he, we found a long time ago that people will tell you they want to see a real fight. And what you just talked about with the dagger being quick and, and done, people would say, I want to see that. I want to see a real fight. But it's not. Real fights don't last that long. Last fights are done. One person makes a mistake and yeah. somebody's done. If you've gone five minutes, you fought for way too way long. Way too long, exactly. Way too long. But, uh, so, but that's what the movies show. And so what we do is we actually try and show you what a realistic fight in the movies would actually be. And we let you see it in person. And that's why I think people come to fairs, is they have this fantasy in their head, and they want to come and live that fantasy. And so Maggie and I and the rest of the Swords of Valor and anybody else we interact with, that's our job. Looked like you were about to say something. Were you about to say something? No. One word again. So we, we love giving that, that ambiance. So we try and give you what it is you're expecting. What's that fantasy you're looking to get? We'll give it to you. What sort of training is involved with this? Um, lots of training. Um, the the I'm gonna I'm gonna break your heart and say the swordsmanship is actually the smallest part of it. Um, a lot more, it's actually willing to take a hit. It's willing to get out there in front of a crowd. It's willing to be um, be a punching bag at times. We do get hurt doing this. It is a physical act. I it did notice that last week. Um, you can still see a, a few scratches on my arm. Um, I can, but they can't. But okay. that's fine. <laughs> High def. Okay, no, um, they do. But we, but you, the swordsmanship is just a lot of practice. Anybody can learn to sword fight. Anybody can learn a sword fight. Not everybody can do it in front of a crowd, though. Okay. Well, what are some upcoming events? 
upcoming events. Well, this is the last weekend of BlackRock, unfortunately. I do recommend it next year, though. It is still a good event. It has been so far. Um, ne- in two weeks from now, we'll be in Mackinac City. Uh, the Crossings at Mackinac is putting on a Renaissance Fair right there in the outside uh, of this uh, outdoor mall. Uh, there's a fountain. There'll be mermaids in it. There'll be us swing sword fighting. The jail will be there arresting people. There'll be various other people around. <laughs> the jail. The jail. Oh, I've jail. been arrested last week. <laughs> um, after that, in a few more weeks after that, and unfortunately I'm blanking on the dates, but we'll be at That's the fine. GVSU Renaissance Festival up at the Allendale campus. Okay. Uh, a great little event, too. Free event. Free is always good. Um, after that, I'll let you in a little secret. We're still working on it, but there's a pretty good chance we're actually going to be at a hockey game. <laughs> what? It is so random. It is. Completely random, but we've been asked to actually show up at a hockey game. Are you going to be fighting with... I'm really hoping for fighting on ice skates. I want to try it, but... And hockey sticks. And hockey sticks. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. I'm pretty sure there's some probably legalities about me fighting in a hockey stick, you know. All right, and where would be, people be able to find you online if they were interested in the Swords of Valor from Kalamazoo? Do a quick search on Facebook. That is our biggest push right now is on our Facebook page. We, uh, I like it because everybody can share your photos of our shows. You can see people that have actually been in our shows. You can see videos, photographs. So what you do is you look us up. It's Swords of Valor. Now, we use the old English spelling. So it's Valor, V-A-L-O-U-R, and you will find us. If you don't put that in, you end up finding some game sequences that actually are from some random role-playing game. So. Fair enough. I did notice that when I was doing research. It's like, this isn't the group. All right, this Facebook group's the one I went to. Yeah, this is, so do, and if you have any questions, my name is, ha- I go by Haven the Hare out here. Um, and if you look for Haven the Hare on Facebook, you'll find my personal page. And yeah, he does have a personal page. You can friend us. I do recommend almost all of my troop. We do have personal pages. Um, you can usually learn a little bit more of the history about each of us individually. Um, but we, uh, if you have any questions or if you're interested in our group, just shoot us an email or a message, and we'll definitely talk back with you. Um, Maggie, do you, is there anything you want to add? No. Still, still, still one more. Still one do you word. have any more questions for Maggie? I mean, she is a new well, member. Well, Maggie, since... I was going to say, do you have anything to say to your fans? Because I'm sure you've amassed some. Um, I'm glad that you enjoy my fighting because I like fighting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I will and say what about for you, Haven? For me, uh, my fans, I feel bad for. I mean, don't, don't, I, I really do. I, I'm not the kind of person, I don't do this for fans. I do this for the show. I do this to get out in front of people and, and to have people cheer or boo me, whichever you feel is necessary. Fans do not like Haven. Do That's not like Haven. Feel free to not like my Facebook page. Yes. I don't, is that a thing? Can we, well, can we not how about like you it? like his page and then immediately, immediately unlike it? Just so you can unlike it, yes. Um, I, I really do it for the entertainment. I do it for the show. I do it for kids. Um, Maggie, actually, I will give a lot of credit. She uh, she's a, a female fighting in my group. She gets a lot of attention from little girls who uh, who look up to her. Empowerment. And yeah, she you know, she, there have been a lot of young girls and who have come up to her after the shows and have been impressed with her and they want to be her. And it really is it's really nice to see that they have somebody because even though she acts very much like a wildling, very you know, lots of growls as you told her one word responses, the fact that she's actually out there and doing something that is mostly you know a, a man's thing, you know, getting out and fighting. Um, I'm very proud of her, and I, I love the fact that she has a lot of that, you know, the young girls just flock to her. And I, even though she, sometimes I'm pretty sure, <laughs> you didn't do this, she doesn't, like, we don't do this for the, we do this for the entertainment aspect of it. We don't, you know, if we have fans, I love it, I'm great for them, but, and I'm grateful for them, but it's, it's. Oh, no, you, you got it right, I'm great for them. I'm great for them, yes. That's a, super but, cocky, like. Okay, and the funny part is, is that that is not me as a person. <laughs> I might, when I'm having the hair and I'm in persona and I'm walking around and I'm cocky and I'm here. And you yeah, haven't been in persona it. this entire interview? No, this is the real me, unfortunately. <laughs> I cannot believe this. This is interview over. Oh, okay. you want, you want the, you want like the real, just like, well, having the hair, of course you're interviewing me. I'm perfect. Oh, I've been so misled this entire time. You're right. <laughs> but nonetheless, well, thank you, Haven, and thank you, Maggie, for for granting me this interview. Oh, thank you, thank you. And not killing you for it, right? I, yeah. I appreciate you know, we, it. She brought a weapon. We could stab you. No, no. And also, I want to say this before I go. Maggie, I guess we'll just add you to a no, the already long list of badass women that will easily wreck you. Because <laughs> to me, the, uh, uh, gender means nothing when it comes to fighting. No. Either you know how to fight or you don't know how to fight. I do always appreciate an opponent that is not afraid to actually attack and or disarm or injure me um, and then not apologize. Uh, well, if you step into the ring, 
All the <laughs> you're, 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 right an, you're, an, you're an challenge. Equal. No, you not at all. No, no. the buffer list. Litter tonight. No, 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 no. I'm so soft and fragile. I just no. I can't I, do it are anymore. Are you afraid she's gonna make you geek on a stick? No. Um, I'll break that stick because I'm so heavy. Oh. But nonetheless. Oh, that was a that was a. Okay, I won't make any jokes like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both once again for this interview, folks. This is Joe from my geek scene at Black Rock Medieval Fest. Medieval Fest. Well, Black Rock Medieval Fest. Take it easy. <laughs>